competitors out on the track. And one athlete we have not seen in quite some time. The last time he raced here, he was sixth at the World Championships in the steeplechase. That is Evan Jagger. He'll be wearing hip 10. And the second at the 2016 Olympic Games in the 3000 steeplechase, a seven-time U.S. outdoor champion. A lot of people have been asking, where has he been at? Well, it's been a while since we've seen him on the outdoor stage, and he's finally getting back into it. Had a season's best performance, 340 at the 10, not too long ago in this event. Uh, but perhaps has his eyes set on trying to make another Olympic team, Dan. Well, it's been a frustrating four years for Evan Jager, and, you know, he, he's, he's certainly one to talk about it, but uh, it really all started going bad for him right at the end of 2018. Before COVID, he had a serious foot injury, and it led to a calf injury, and then COVID, and then he came out of, out of COVID. And every time he started to get in some good shape, every time he started to turn the corner, that injury would come back and, and continue to set him back. And it looked like he was going to make a, make a comeback. Uh, uh, he had a decent 2022 where he made the world championship team and ran at the world championships here in front of a, in front of a USA crowd. But then in 2023, he only got through a few events in the indoor season before the foot started hurting again. And so, you know, our, our, our prayers are with him, our best wishes, because uh, he's somebody who, like Emma Coburn, really, really uh, put a spotlight on the steeplechase here in the United States on the men's side. Jordan McIntosh representing Canada wearing hip one is Elias and Kabasenchi of the University of Portland and then Christian Grable also representing Canada. This is Thomas Palfrey of the University of Oregon, just the junior for the Ducks. Luke Alfolder, another standout for the Ducks. And the high schooler, Josiah Tostenson, representing Rogue Valley, but goes to Crater High School. We saw him compete in the Pro Mile here at the Oregon Relays. Didn't necessarily have a great race, but has already ran 4.03 this outdoor season. Reinhardt Harrison, another standout for the Ducks. Freshman ran 341.64. This is Alex Grover, another Canadian athlete, wearing hip nine. And then there's the man right there, Evan Jagger. Lifetime best 338.67 of the Bowerman Track Club, the steeplechase king here in the United States getting his chance to run the 1500 for the first time here at Hayward in a while. Duncan Hamilton, the former Montana State Bobcat standout, also a steeplechase specialist. He'll be running in the 1500. Elliot Cook, the 2022 Pac-12 800 meter champion, looking to see if he can get another good time here before Pac-12s next week in Boulder. And then the Canadian Mohamed Ahmed from the Nike Bowerman Track Club, He'll round out the order out there wearing hip 13. Just got done competing at the World Championships last year in Budapest for Canada. So it's 13 men, including the couple of those pro athletes. The high school athlete in the mix right there in the light blue top. Again, really, the spotlight is on Evan Jagger. Again, we haven't really seen him race at Hayward Field in quite some time. And like you said, Dan, trying to get back to the form he was once in and perhaps make that Olympic team in Paris for this summer. And it's interesting, the Bowerman athletes here, you see them in red, they're going to be easy to spot here, your, your post-collegiate athletes. They're all listed around the 5,000 meters as well. I imagine that's just uh, on, the, on the docket as a, as a training as a training run, we'll get some of those athletes here. These athletes will uh, go over to the 5K and, and do some pacing duties. But, man, when you got somebody like Mo Ahmed in the field, uh, it, it just it spices things up. It makes it more interesting. A guy who's run four or five seconds faster than anybody else in the field can turn it on anytime he absolutely wants. But he's had a wonderful career so far, certainly representing Canada. Uh, brought home, uh, brought them a, a couple of medals at international competition. So, you know, getting a chance to see him live in person is a, is a treat for me. Mohamed in fifth position. Jagger right back there in eighth and Hamilton in fourth. But it's the Oregon trio out front early. Reinhardt Harrison, Palfrey, and Elliot Cook. Tostenson. 
in the mix too. You see a lot of either picking it up and then slowing it down a little bit, although it's a, it's an honest pace. They went through that first 300 meters in 44 seconds, or so right around 60, 61 seconds on that first 400. Harrison Cook, Palfrey, followed by Hamilton and Ahmed. Then Gravel, Tossinson, and then Jagger right there in that eighth position. So 59.88 on that last 400. So the pace picking up here from Harrison all looks, looks relatively comfortable for this 1500 race. Well, the Oregon Ducks are doing a really good job up front controlling that pace, and this is certainly uh, uh, something they did a lot of even, even before the new coach... Uh, Jerry came on board. The Oregon Ducks are just famous for getting up front, controlling the pace in some of these big races, especially the national championships, and then just being able to outkick everybody at the end of these 1,500 meters in front of a, in front of big crowds. This kind of takes me back to five, six, seven years ago when the Ducks did that quite a bit, and here they are flying again. They're not going to make it easy for anybody to get past them, but they're clipping along at a nice pace right now. Looks like Harrison stepping to the side right here, maybe stepping off at some point, and he does. So it's Elliot Cook and Palfrey 1-2, followed by Hamilton and Ahmed. 60-34 on that last lap. They are now in the final 400 meters with Cook out front just ahead of Palfrey. Let's see if Mo Ahmed can, char can, can desert, get a charge here going. He's a little far back. So you see the Oregon athletes just kind of peeling off. This isn't Duncan Hamilton's wheelhouse either, running real fast in the last 200 meters. But he's run some good. Uh, he has run some good 1500 meters and good mile races while he was in college. Palfrey trying to hold off the former All-American from Montana State, and it's now Hamilton moving on to the outside. Ahmed trying to go with his teammate too. It's Hamilton to the lead. Ahmed now onto the outside moves. But it's going to be Duncan Hamilton first across the line, then Ahmed, and then Palfrey as Duncan Hamilton. 57 20 on that last 400, 342 28 for a season's best performance. Well, and like Christine Aragon, I don't imagine he's going to run too many of those each season. He ran 339 in 2002, and maybe I spoke a little too soon about this not being in his wheelhouse. He, he certainly doesn't have just a flat speed. I kind of expected Mo Ahmed to really open up there at the end, but you can see he just doesn't quite have it at this time of the season, just working his way in. But a uh, number of first uh, races for these athletes who come out here as a post-collegiate athletes, the pros. And so, uh, you know, early season, early season racing, and even though Duncan Hamilton ran well here, you can see just a little bit of rust in those pros. Here we get a chance. 200 meters to go. Palfrey up front. You know, he's going to the well right here. Trying to just summon every bit of strength he can. You see the distress on his face. And it's the Stiepler with more strength just going around the outside. Certainly, but we're used to seeing Duncan, Ham Duncan Hamilton just, you know, go a little bit slower than that from a pace standpoint in a steeplechase. Uh, but he looked good. Both the Bowerman guys looked good. But I think the, the Oregon guys uh, looked exceptional. I would have loved to have seen Cook finish that race. 